All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another TAMP talk. This is the second to last talk of this academic year. And today we have Melissa Givy, who's going to tell us about some criteria for detecting large, small, and gullet homomorphisms. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me. And it's a great pleasure and very good to see you, uh, many friends here. Um, <clears throat> So this uh, this talk was um, is uh, based on two joint works. So the first part is uh, joint work. Um, so the large part is the joint joint work um, with Ryo Takahashi. Okay, so the second part is about minimal intersections. That's a work on progress with Luigi Ferreira, Dave Jorgensen, um, Nick Pacascas, and, and Josh Pollitz. So, um, so, so we all the rings are commutative. Um, Are commutative notarian and local in this talk. Um, so, um, so the the first idea is come from um, of Ramov in nineteen seventy eight. So he introduced small homomorphisms. And, and then a year later, Levin um, in 1979, I guess, so introduced a large homomorphism. So let, what is what are these? So uh, let um, f to be a surjective local homor homomorphism. Surjective local homomorphism, and then uh, this f introduce uh, induces. Maps of from tors of k and k and k over r to um, tor k k over s, and so f is small if. F i is injective for all i, and so dually F is large if F i is surjective. And I always make this joke that this. <laughs> small homomorphisms is a large paper and large homomorphisms is a small paper because uh, small homomorphism, if you look at Lucho's papers, 54 pages, but large homomorphism is a short, it has a seven pages. So, so this was a motivation that uh, maybe we can discover some more stuff about large homomorphism, but uh, also, you Listen, yeah. what do you call it? What do you call a homomorphism that's both small and large? Cannot happen that. It cannot happen. In, in that case, couldn't it, it be could be, couldn't it be an isomorphism? Isomorphism, yeah. Yeah, yeah so what do you call it? It's isomorphism. Oh, you just say it's an isomorphism, yeah. you don't say it's large just, and small. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and there is another kind of uh, homomorphism called Golod homomorphism. Actually, the 
the idea of, of small homomorphism come from the Golod homomorphism. So F is Golod. If uh, in this diagram, Um, so the diagram is Tor uh, K and K goes to Tor I of S K K, and then there is a map to Tor over R of the maximal ideal of S and K I minus one. And this is S. So this is isomorphism for all I bigger than one. Um, so, um, so this comes from, this diagram comes from this short exact sequence of uh, MS and then K. Uh, I, I guess this part. Um, sorry, it should be the maximal ideal of S here. Yeah, this this part comes from that, and this is just the induced homomorphism. So. Uh, if you, this is same as if I and call this delta and this is maybe gamma. So uh, F is colored if in this diagram, both uh, delta and gamma are injective. So, so if you look at here, this is injective and this is isomorphism. So it implies that F I has to be injective. So in particular, any Golod homomorphism is small. All right, so, um, but uh, what are the consequences of about the large homomorphism? So this is the theorem that Levin proved. Um, uh, these are equivalent conditions that F from R to S is large. And we have a nice Poincare series formula that Poincare series of R, K over R is Poincare series of S times Poincare series of K over S. And, and this is also true for any R module, so Poinc and any S module, Poincare series of M over R is same as Poincare equal to Poincare series of S over R times Poincare series of M over S for every finitely generated S module. So this uh, gives you a nice tool to compute the Poincare series of S modules over R specifically K. And uh, there are other, uh, there's another condition number four that uh, this induced map Tor um, I over R S and K to Tor R K and K induced by a comparison map is injective for all I. 
Okay, so let me write down here the necessary conditions for a homomorphism to be large or small. So again, F is from R to S and this is a surjection. So S is uh, R mod an ideal I. So F is small only if I is subset of square of maximal ideal of R and F is large only if I intersect with M, square, M of maximal ideal squared is I times a max, maximal ideal. So this condition actually is nothing just but saying that all generators of I can be completed to a minimal generators of maximal ideal. So, so I is the generators of I is part of the generators of maximal ideal. So that means all of them are degree one. So that's why this this cannot happen that a, a, a homomorphism both large or small unless the isomorphism. Okay. Um, so let me write some noun examples, very famous examples. So. Um, so I, I put this necessary condition um, always so you know, in either of the followings. Uh, I is uh, the map is large homomorphism. So number one, projective dimension of I is finite. So this is actually, this condition implies that the I generated with regular sequence. And this is, and obviously um, is, this, this case is proved by Levin, it's easy to see. And then, um, Another case is annihilator of I is the maximal ideal. Another example is R mod I is complete intersection. And one more example, if R is a fiber product, that means that if M is can be direct sum of I and J. So in that case, again, um, that this map is a large homomorphism. All right, so let me just fix some notations for Kuzul complex. So, so K of I will be the, is the Kuzul complex of R with respect to the minimal generators of I and we write HI of I to be the HI of the, the I's Kuzul homology and yeah, right, HI of R to be the HI of the maximal ideal Kuzul complex with respect to generators of maximal ideal. So, um, so this large homomorphism over complete intersections is very, is very well understood. So I guess um, People know about that uh, many long time ago. So let me just 
list those conditions. over complete intersections. So let R be this uh, complete intersection local ring. And, and again, I put this necessary condition here. Um, then the, these are equivalent. This map is large. R mod I is complete intersection. Um, the map of induced map of H2 of I tensor K to H2 of R is injective. I can write this as another case is Tor2 of R mod I and R to Tor2, uh, sorry, not R, should be K. <laughs> Uh, to Tor2 of K and K is injective. Um, oh, here I made a mistake. This should be H1, sorry, H1 is injective. And, and then number four, H2 of R H2 of S or R mod I is surjective. And I write four prime is Tor three of R over R K K to Tor three over S or R mod I of K and K. This is uh, surjective. Um, so these conditions are uh, equivalent. So you can easily find out that over, if you want an example of homomorphism, which is not large, the best and easy, uh, easy place to look is CI rings. So this R mod I has to be CI, for example, um, So let R is K X Y Z over X squared, Y squared and Z squared. And I is X plus Y plus Z. And characteristic of K is not uh, equal to two. Then R mod I is isomorphic to K y and z over y and z squared. So this is not ci. So this map is not, it's not large. And, and the reason that this is true because the incomplete in intersection uh, so if you take the acyclic closure of um, if you take a acyclic closure of k over r then so x i is zero for i bigger than equal to three so so in other words that, um, so the only place that you need to check is Tor3 or the injection of Tor2. And, and these are equivalent because Tor2 
tor2 is just you know, determined by the, the, the first Kuzul homology of I over K in this case. All right, so any questions so far? Sorry, I am writing maybe a little bit, not, not in details, but yeah, I am <laughs> trying to catch the time. So yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so, and let me write down some remarks. Um, So instead of looking at um, um, all the tours, so th this is true that if R2S is, uh, so let me just write R2S be a local homomorphism. Local and surjective, so um, if all tors of k and kk is surjective, this map for all large enough i, then f is large. Um, how about the injection? So they, these are equivalent to be large. So if tor, the higher tors of um, S and K to and to tor R K K is injective. Uh, not necessarily it is large because you can um, and the reason is that you can take a, a, a ideal with finite projective dimension so that's the kind of cheating so you can you can take projective dimension of I is finite and I is in the square of maximal ideal. So that's phase the necessary condition. But uh, we don't know the answer if projective dimension of I is infinity and all higher tors of S and K to K and K is injective. So I can write, uh, but but in a, some cases, we in a, just a special case where I can do that. I mean, not special, just uh, with extra assumption. So if higher tors are injective, And this necessary condition holds um, I times M of R and, and the induced map of H1 of I to H1 of R is non-zero. then you can prove that F is large. And the reason is in this case, when this is non-zero, you can find a, a, a gamma derivation 
over acyclic closure of um, K over R. And then there is a similar techniques that we, the technique that Gulick Singh uses in, in his book for proving a theorem. So that, that technique works for, for this case. We can show that uh, this, this map is, is large. So that means this is injective for all uh, positive i. All right. So I can now maybe pass to um, over Golo rings and and Kuzul rings. So this was the our main theorem in in the paper with uh, Ryo Takahashi. So let R be local and R and K be local and I non zero ideal with I M square intersect with A M squared is I M. So that's the necessary condition. Then, then these are equivalent. So the induced map for I M I and K to Tor I and K induced by this inclusion I M subset of I is zero for all I and then the map R to R mod I is large and uh, the other map R to R mod M I is small. So uh, moreover under these, under these equivalent conditions, this map is actually is a Golod homomorphism. So if if this is large and this is small, that that pushes that these all all of these maps are zero, and this implies that this is a Golod homomorphism. And when this happens, is most like most of the cases, this this condition happens when R mod I is a Kuzul Kuzul R module. So let me define. Kuzul modules. So simply this Kuzul module is the module that has a linear resolution or all the entries are in the uh, are in the form of linear forms. So uh, let's for simply to be simple, let R be graded. Ring and M and R module. Uh, uh, actually, I need finitely generated R module. And M is Kosul. If um, M has linear free resolution. over R. So in other words, regularity of M over R is zero. 
and and the ring R is called Kuzul. If um, K is uh, Kuzul R module. Okay, so now I can set write this corollary. So if um, again, I need this necessary condition. Um, if R mod I is Kazool R module, then this map is large. And the other map R to R mod M I is Gulu. And, and this Golod homomorphisms are very useful because if you have a Golod homomorphism, so maybe I should write here, um, this is equivalent to be Golod. So R2S is Golod. If, if you have a, a formula for Poincaré series, that Poincaré series of S, uh, K over S is the Poincaré series of K over R over one minus T times Poincaré series of S over R minus one. So in this case, you, you again, you have a formula for, to compute Poincaré series. It's, um, it's it's nice and and so sometimes so in the many cases it's rational it gives you rational Poincaré series and maybe I should write here uh, also R is Golod R is Golod ring called maybe I, I can call it write it later, let me write down another corollary. So if, if R itself is Kozul algebra, and graded algebra over K, then, um, and R to R mod I is large, then um, again, this is Golod homomorphism, R to M I is Golod. And, and also R mod M I is Kuzul. So in this case, R mod MI, so actually R mod MI is just a fiber product of R mod I and R mod J, where J is the complementary uh, generators of the maximal ideal. So in this case, you can, uh, you can see that this is Kuzul if and only if the fiber product of two rings is Kuzul if and only if each of those are Kuzul rings. And that's the result of Frank Moore. Um, so we use that. And uh, maybe I could write this, um, what is the Golod ring? So R is Golod. If the completion of R um, so actually the 
if the map from Q to R hat where, which is, this is the, um, is colored homomorphism where this is a minimal minimal Cohen factorization. Yes, that's by Cohen structure. Um, for, so in this case, this the Poincare series of um, S over R here, um, so here is R hat. That's that turns to just the Kuzul homologies of um, R. So it's uh, so this in this case R is called Golo. And so we have another result about Golo rings. So if R is Golo and So I, I need actually a map. So let R to be S be homomorphism as local homomorphism. And so if R is Golod and uh, Kuzul homologies of R to Kuzul homologies of S, this induced map is surjective. for all i, then, um, then this map F is large. And in part, and also S, S is Golo. So this part that, um, if F is large and R is Golod, then S is Golod is uh, already recently proven by uh, Gupta. So Gupta proved this, that if R is Golod and R to S is large, then S is Golod. And this is a useful also <laughs> to, to determine uh, Golod rings or to detect Golod rings. So for example, let uh, R to be a game like K X Y Z over X squared, X Y X Z, Y squared and Z squared. So for a while, we I, I was thinking that this is a Golod ring, but it is not because, um, so if you take uh, I to be, um, just X, then R mod X is complete intersection is Y and Z over y squared and z squared. So this is then uh, by result of Levin, this is large homomorphism. So one of the conditions that Levin showed, uh, put as an example is that our R mod i is complete intersection. So this is large, but uh, this is a complete intersection of codimension two, but not colon. R is not colon. Uh, sorry, R mod X is not colon. So R itself is not colon. All right. Any questions? So 
so far. Would you mind scrolling up just a little bit, just to show your result again above the, thank you. This corollary or, or this, oh, this yeah, corollary. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you, if you could just pause it just for a second. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wanted to read it again. Mm -hmm. You, you can go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's move to the next part is about the minimal intersections. Um, so this is a work under progress. So Progress with uh, Luigi um, Dave Jorgensen um, Nick Prakaskas and Josh Politz. All right. Uh, so we call this, say R is a minimal intersection. If, um, if it fits in this dia diagram, So there are maps from Q, there's a Q, R1, and R2, then these are subjective maps, R. So let's call this uh, V1, V2, Psi1, and Psi2, and this map is phi. And, and this tors, over Q of R1 and R2, R0. <clears throat> so when, when Q is regular, this condition is um, the defining ideals I intersect J is I times J. So if so if you write this R equal to Q mod I and this Q mod J, um, so R is going to be Q mod I plus J. And, and so um, the properties of minimal intersections are just there is a, there is a paper with Dave and Frank Moore. So they were so the, their goal was to cook up some examples of non-trivial vanishing. So they but they studied also this minimal intersections. And for example, if Q is regular, then then R is Quem Macaulay if and only if R1 and R2 is Quem Macaulay. And the same. And similarly, R is Gornstein if R1 and R2 is Gornstein, or R is complete intersection if and only if R1 and R2 complete intersection. So we were interested in computing Poincaré series. Actually, this is done many years ago. Uh, this is the theorem uh, in the same paper of small homomorphism paper. So in 1978, he proved that, so here Q is not regular, so it's in general form. So if V1 or V2, one of V1 or V2 is small homomorphism, then there is a, an isomorphism of 
op algebras tor r k k is tensor product of tor r1 k k over and tor r2 k k over tor q so as a and the consequence is the corollary is that in this case you can write the poincare series of k over r as the product of poincare series of k over r1 times poincare series of k over r2 divided by poincare series of k over q so we were just uh, looking another way by using homotopy lie algebras um, so maybe i let me just write the consequences of our main result uh, so we looked at homotopy Lie algebras um, of R, R1, R2, and Q. So hey, let me just state the main theorem. Um, there exist so with the with the assumptions above that means r if r is minimal intersection uh, so r is minimal intersection and there is an isomorphism of graded Lie algebras um, pi of phi pi of phi one the homomorphism phi one direct sum with pi of too. So I'm not going to <laughs> tell what are these so because I don't have time. So these are Lie algebras, but uh, I am writing down the consequences. Um, so let me just copy this map again uh, here so you can see what is going on. All right. So, so the first thing that is that phi cannot be Golod. Phi cannot be Golod homomorphism. Um, and if phi one is small, then psi one or psi two doesn't matter. Psi, so if phi i is small and psi i is small, i could be one or two, so by symmetry. Um, and phi one, for example, phi one is large if and only if psi one is large. So 
So Lucho proved that if if phi one is small, then you have this Poincare series formula. Uh, in the case that phi one is large, is immediately you can prove that formula again. Let me prove that and and the Poincare series formula is true. Uh, let me just copy this again. And okay, let me just prove this <laughs> because it's very really easy to prove. So, so if if one of them, for example, if this one is is large and then this one is large, then what we get from phi one large. you can get the Poincare series of um, K over Q is the Poincare series of R1 over Q times Poincare series of K um, over R1. And then it implies that Psi1 is also large. So then you can get um, the Poincare series of uh, K over R2 is all to Poincare series of um, R over R2 times Poincare series of K over R. But, uh, but in fact, these are the same things because, because of the, these are same because the vanishing of since the tors vanish over q is zero so in fact you you take the free resolution of r1 over q and then tensor with r2 you get the free resolution of r over r2 and so <laughs> So now this solve the solving this equation, just putting them equal. So this solve like canceling these in the equations, you get the this Poincare series formula. And maybe I can uh, just finish by this that there is a similar formula for Bass series. So if but in a special case, if, if Q is regular and R Cohen Macaulay, then there is a um, equality of Bass series of R over R is equal to Bass series of R1 over R1 times Bass series of R2 over R2 times Bass series of Q over Q, the same same as the Poincare series, but this one is for best series of R over itself. And yeah, I guess this is a good place to stop. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's thank Muzin. Thank you so much. All right, questions? Feel free to just unmute yourself if you want to ask a question out loud. Okay, so I have a question. Um, yeah. You just told us uh, your your last the last time you told us. Um, you said that you have this uh, um, isomorphism between the the homotopy Lie algebras of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so, so is this explicit? Like, can you can you explicitly do you do you explicitly construct this isomorphism or? Uh, right. Right. Yes. We um, just looking at the minimal models of R one and R two over Q, and and actually this comes from the the pullback of. Um, um like um these maps v1 to the pi of v 
Yeah, I, I, I guess it's not um, constructive, so, but it's we we show that the pullback is same as this. Um, Um, yeah, there are some more details. Actually, Josh knows those things better than me. <laughs> I guess he can answer better. Right. Good, thanks. Um, are there other questions from the audience? And um, this is a, also I am interested, we are interested in because all of those Golod and large homomorphisms can be characterized by uh, by the Poincaré series formula. So let me show you. For example, this is equivalent condition to be Golod, or the large homomorphism like this this formula. This is equivalent to be large. So we are hoping to show that this also this formula is equivalent to to Small. be minimal intersection. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, you. let me remind everyone that next week will be our last talk of uh, this academic year. So uh, I'll see you all then. <laughs>